Learning Objective 5. Analyze transactions by using the accounting equation. As we saw in Learning Objective 4, the accounting equation is assets equals liabilities plus equity. Assets are economic resources that are owned by an entity. Examples can include cash, accounts receivable, prepaid insurance, equipment, and vehicles. Liabilities represent creditor claims on those assets. These are what entities owe and can include bank loans, accounts payable, and unearned revenue. Equity is the owner's claim on the net assets of the business and include share capital and retained earnings, which are basically undistributed profits. The accounting equation is also the foundation for what we call the double entry accounting system that is characterized by debits and credits. Assets are debits and liabilities and equity are credits. And when our balance sheet balances, we can say that debits equal credits. When it comes to recording economic events or transactions into the accounting system, there are three basic steps involved. First, we have to determine which accounts are affected. For example, does this transaction include cash or something else? Next, we need to determine if the account has increased or decreased. So if our transaction does include cash, is cash going up or down? And then, once we know that, we can record the transaction. All transactions must affect at least two accounts. Digging deeper here and looking at the accounts that can be affected by a transaction, some examples of assets include cash, which is made up of coins, currency, bank accounts, and petty cash, accounts receivable or amounts owed by customers, prepaid expenses or goods or services that are paid in advance and are expenses that are consumed, and property, plant, and equipment, which are assets that provide benefits for the current year and beyond. Examples of liability accounts that can be affected include bank loans, which are obligations to repay cash in the future to a bank, accounts payable, which are obligations to repay suppliers for goods or services, and unearned revenues, which are advanced payments of cash from customers for goods or services that have not yet been provided. Finally, examples of equity accounts include share capital, which are amounts invested by the shareholders or owners of the business, and retained earnings which is the aggregate sum of all the net income or losses over the life of a business, less any dividends declared by the board of directors. The second step is to determine if the accounts we've identified are increasing or decreasing. Any account, whether they're assets, liabilities, or equity, can increase or decrease, and we will see that they're increased by their normal status as a debit or credit, and decreased by the opposite of their normal status or balance. For example, if an asset's normal status is a debit, then assets will always increase with debits and decrease with credits. For liabilities and equity, their normal status is a credit, so they will increase with credits and decrease with debits. In any transaction, debits must always equal credits to ensure the accounting equation stays in balance. Now let's illustrate the recording of various entries. In this first transaction, Big Dog issued shares to the owner for $10,000 cash. We can identify the accounts affected here as being cash and share capital, both of which are going up. Since cash is an asset, and assets are normally debits, cash goes up with a debit of $10,000. Share capital is part of equity, and equity is normally a credit, so share capital must increase with a credit of $10,000. For this transaction, debits equals credits, and the accounting equation will remain in balance by increasing $10,000 on the left and $10,000 on the right. Here's a second transaction where Big Dog borrows $3,000 from a bank. The accounts affected here are cash because the bank will deposit the loan proceeds into the company's bank account, causing cash to go up. The bank loan is a liability, which also goes up. Big Dog now owes the bank $3,000. So we record this transaction as an increase or debit to cash and an increase or credit to the bank loan, which is a liability, and the normal balance of liabilities are credits. Again, debits equal credits, and the accounting equation will remain in balance by increasing by $3,000 on the left and $3,000 on the right. Here's another transaction where the company purchased equipment for $3,000 cash. The accounts affected here are cash, which would be going down as the company uses it to pay for the equipment that's going up. This is a situation where both accounts are assets, and one goes up and one goes down. Cash goes down with a credit, and the equipment will go up with a debit. Since one asset is increased and the other is decreased by the same amount, the entire transaction is limited to the left side or the asset side of the balance sheet. In this fourth transaction, the company purchases a tow truck for $8,000, paying $3,000 in cash, and borrows the rest on a loan. 
In this case, there are three accounts affected. The truck, which is an asset that's increasing by $8,000. Cash, which is also an asset that is decreasing by $3,000. And a bank loan, which is increasing by $5,000. The accounting equation is affected by an increase of a net of $5,000 in assets and $5,000 in liabilities. Here's a transaction where Big Dog paid $2,400 for a one-year insurance policy. Because the company paid for the policy, that means that cash, which is an asset, is going down by $2,400. The prepaid insurance is an asset because it represents a prepayment of the policy for the next year and thus is an asset that's going up by $2,400. This transaction is limited to the asset side of the balance sheet with one asset going up and the other going down. In this January 10th transaction, the corporation paid $2,000 in cash to reduce the bank loan. The two accounts affected here are cash and the bank loan, both of which are going down by $2,000. Cash with a credit since assets are normally debits and the bank loan with a debit since liabilities are normally credits. On January 15th, the company received $400 from a customer in advance of services to be performed. Receiving cash means the cash goes up, so that's a debit to cash of $400. The other part of the entry requires a credit for debits and credits to balance, and the advance from customers is unearned revenue. Big Dog will happily take the customer's money in advance, but it either has to do the work or return the money if it doesn't. That makes unearned revenue a liability which is going up here with a credit of $400. In this next transaction, automobile repairs of $10,000 were made for a customer. $8,000 was paid in cash and $2,000 to be received from the customer in the future. Here, the company did the work, so repair revenue is affected and will increase. Now, because revenues ultimately become profits and end up in equity, revenue is going up with a credit of $10,000. The other accounts affected are cash for $8,000 because the customer actually paid that amount, and then accounts receivable for the remaining $2,000 for the amount the customer will pay later on. Both of these are assets and are going up with debits. Now the next one is a doozy. Here, the company paid a bunch of operating expenses. $1,600 for rent, $3,500 for salaries, $2,000 for supplies expense, all of which were for cash, and $700 for truck operating expenses, which was on credit. All of those expenses ultimately affect the profits and therefore the equity of the business. Since expenses cause profits to drop and profits will end up in equity, the equity would decrease. So those would all be debits to their respective accounts. The cash expenses add up to $7,100, so cash is going down with a credit of $7,100, and the truck expense wasn't paid yet, and so was a liability of $700 in accounts payable, which is going up. Thus, the accounting equation is still in balance, with assets going down by $7,100, liabilities increasing by $700, and equity dropping by $7,800. The last transaction is for dividends, which is a disbursement of profits to the shareholders. Dividends of $200 were paid in cash, so cash is going down, and since cash is an asset with a normal debit balance, cash receives a credit here, and equity is also going down because the dividend comes out of equity so it goes down with a debit of $200. Now that might seem a lot, but don't worry if you don't quite understand debits and credits just yet. This can take a lot of practice, and there's more to come in later chapters. This is just meant to provide you with an overview of how the double entry accounting system works. So now, to put that all together, we can use a worksheet to summarize all the transactions and see that all of our assets total $19,100, which equals the sum of liabilities of $7,100 and equity of $12,000. This is the source for the creation of our four financial statements. Notice here that the revenues, expenses, and dividends end up in the retained earnings column because revenues increase equity, expenses decrease equity, and dividends decrease equity. Here's our income statement with the $10,000 in revenue less the $7,800 in expenses for a total net income of $2,200. And here's the balance sheet showing the ending balances of all the asset, liability, and equity accounts. And here's our statement of changes in equity showing how the share capital started with zero, since the company was new, and increased by issuing $10,000 worth of shares. The retained earnings also starts out with zero, and increases by $2,200 in net income 
and then decreases by the $200 in dividends paid out. Here, the company earned $2,200 in profits and paid out $200 of that to the owner, leaving $2,000 left or retained in the company. The last item to mention here as part of financial statements relates to accounting time periods. Annual financial statements are prepared at the end of each fiscal year at the very least, but some companies prepare interim financial statements, usually monthly or quarterly. 